<laughs> and we're back. All right, so there's nomenclature. This probably should be under that, but I want to say about this. Cam ground. Cam ground. Most aircraft pistons that I know of, they are cam ground pistons. It is not an oddity. That is the that is the norm. So cam ground means the cross section. Cross section. Cross section perpendicular. Perpendicular. Oh, this is a terrible way to put it. Cross section perpendicular is greater than in line with the piston pin. The cross section perpendicular, how about this? Two piston pin. Two piston pin is greater. What the heck does that mean? Let's see if we can find a picture here. All right, so let's take a look at we'll just take a look at this one right here. Well, let me take one more down. Another picture. Whatever, these look even better. All right, so if I, this piston is not round when looked at it this way. So if I measured from this point to this point, it is not going to measure the same as this point to this point. In fact, you can even see it there in the photograph, how much longer the green line is. Okay, that's a joke because of the way it's. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it is so much, it's almost like a three to one ratio. No. Uh, it, the green line is going to be more. I'll put that more. At room temperature, it is going to be greater this way. And the reason why this is, is because if we were to look at the back side of the piston, which I don't think I have a back side of the piston. I don't. Back side of the piston, there is so much more mass in here because of the piston pin bosses. So if you, if you turn it around and you're looking at the skirt, you know, the, the, the skirt is just two thin walls right there. And then it comes around where the piston pin bosses are and all that mass right there. Well, when you heat something up, something that has greater mass is going to expand at a greater rate than something that has less mass. So what happens is at room temperature, uh, the green part measures more, but when that heats up, the whole piston is going to expand, but the dimension in red is going to expand at a greater rate than the green. So by the time it heats up, it's actually going to be perfectly round in the cylinder. So we're going to look for two things uh, that are not the way they should be at room temperature so that they are proper when they heat. So one is the piston is not perfectly round. It's called what? Cam ground. Cam ground. And the reason why it's cam ground is so that at operating temperature, it becomes round. round. All right, so cross section purpose is greater, greater. I'll put at room temperature, at room temp. And I guess it just depends on what. Why? Because one. Oh, there's something down here. <laughs> one, I didn't know what it was. Rate of expansion is more. Is more with mass. That's not a Catholic thing. That's a. Are you sure about that? <laughs> no, because I'm not Catholic. So, uh, rate is more with mass, and and so what happens is as the piston heats up, then the greater mass is going to expand at a greater rate than the part that doesn't have the mass, which is already bigger. So when it all gets to operating temperature, the whole thing is completely round which means that we have a better fit, better fit when engine is at, when engine is at operating temps. And I did find this little tidbit. Um, it allows, allows more wear of the piston where thrust is the greatest. I don't know if that's true. Allow more wear or wear of the piston where thrust is the greatest. So knowing that then, when you look in the table of limits and it said your piston must be this big around, 
it really matters where you measure it, right? Because if you measure it uh, parallel to the piston pin boss, you're going to get one measurement, and if you go 90 degrees to that, you're going to get a different measurement. Which one is more? 90. The 90 degree or the parallel? 90. 90 degree. Okay, I'm out of paper. I got to move. I have to wait. Okay, waiting. Should I tell the story while we're waiting? Yeah, sure. I don't have one. <laughs> Thanks, MJ. You just ruined it. I will tell no stories anymore. MJ is just going to make fun of me. All right. Are you good? Did you guys add two dates to this class because you have to, or you owe Phil? Yeah. Well, you really keep track of stuff, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and why do I owe Phil? You probably even know why I owe Phil, don't you? you Jeez. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, let's see. Balance. Balance. What was the balance required for connecting rods? Half ounce, or, so I'll put this up here, for con rods, we had one half ounce or 14 grams. All right, so we'll just keep that up there. So remember, so balance. So according to this, we should say each piston should be, should be no more than, no more than, and I'm almost afraid to put this. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this right here, textbook, textbook. I got this out of, you're not your textbook, but a different textbook. In fact, it's Wild and Crows, W, Wild and K-R-O-E, you don't have to write that, Wild and Crows. They said uh, should be no more than one quarter ounce, which is more, half ounce or a quarter ounce? Half is more, so this textbook is keeping it to tighter tolerance, right? Uh, different in weight, Different in weight. Different in weight. So that's the same thing, opposing sides. They're saying a quarter ounce, which would be seven grams. All right. Um, although, TCM, who's TCM? Right, states. States one half ounce or 14 grams. So that's the same thing. So. That'd be a total of one ounce if you add in the rods and the, and the thing. So TCM states one half ounce. Who's right? Manufacturers You got it. Well, but if if the textbook said half ounce and TCM said a quarter, what do I have to do? You've got to go with the small. We got to go with the manufacturer. Now, if the manufacturer says you can go as much as a half ounce off. You had a textbook that says a quarter. Is there anything wrong with that? No, no because you want it as best. It's no more than a half an ounce. Do you uh, think that textbook was written on like an average of different manufacturers? Or no, I don't know where they got it. Out of, it might have been out of some book they got. What's the again? Teledyne Continental Motors. They don't exist anymore. It's just cheap, easier than me writing Continental. Okay. And so it saves time. And what am I going to do with my free time? Tell us about SeaWorld. SeaWorld. <laughs> you guys not know that out of the office? <laughs> yeah, use few words, save time. What are you going to do this time you say it, Kevin? SeaWorld. Well, see, I don't know if you're going to SeaWorld or See the World. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I just now got that. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you say that so many times. I just never got it. See? And, and, and see how much time I've used up now trying to save time? So we're not writing Continental. I've actually used up five minutes of our time. <laughs> That's the joke. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, oh. You know, but there, there's tricks to this. In, in, all right, so let's say I get, uh, I order a set of, of six pistons. I'm building an engine, so I order six pistons. And so they come, and I open the box up, and I, and I weigh each one of them, and I have one that's off by more than half an ounce. What am I going to do? Get a grinder. Get a grinder. <laughs> what kind of grinder? Belt grinder, bench grinder? Any of the above. Uh, you probably shouldn't use the one that, that's the bench grinder that says, don't you, no, no non-ferrous material. Yeah, it's the double. 
Don't not use non-ferrous <laughs> materials or something. I don't know. Now, can you grind on them? No. You cannot do it. No. You go. You get in bad trouble for that. You got to send it back. If you go back in time and you use the same part number you ordered, and you end it with BP, it's called a balance pack. So if you needed like a 14 Charlie 68394, but you need six of them, you put six. 14 Charlie 3, I don't know the number, part number. And then you put dash BP and tells the person pulling the order you want a balance pack. And you'll note that when you buy pistons, they all have a number written on it. It's about uh, 1,400 and something. That's how much they weigh. And so they're always written on the box. So when the person's pulling them, if they know that that's what you're doing, they'll try and balance them all out and keep you all the same. So order balance pack. Why would they do that anyway? Because you order them one by one. You know, there is no such thing as a pack of six. It's you need six of them, but I'd like them balance pack, and so they'll they'll do that. So types of pistons. Not that we didn't talk about slipper already, but types of pistons. All right, let me see. Go into figure here. Figure. Two types of pistons. We don't want that one. That one. Which I want this one. Um, I think I like this one better. Yep, I like that one better. Okay. I don't get all weird at... Oh, I'm going to have to fix this. Hang on. Oops. Escape. Discard. Because if you're watching it on YouTube, you can't see that. You can kind of see it now. Okay. Um, this is just representative of what's down here below. So we have different types. How do you know, first of all, which type to put in the engine? Parts book tells you which piston to put in there by part number, end of story. You don't get to choose anything. So, um, let's see. According to this, we had the truncated. We go this way? This way. Flat. So, flat just means flat. Um, and we can look over here. Truncated is also flat. But truncated, it kind of means, the word means um, like to cut off or abbreviate. And so, when you look at that, it's truncated. It is ground off on the corners right there. Um, we have the recessed, um, that's more along this one, recessed right there. And we have some that have really big recesses, in them, especially light combing. Uh, we have this type of recess that goes down. Actually, that's a co co concave. That's recessed. These are crossed. And we got a dome, which we call in the automotive world a what? Hemi. So, hemi, high compression. So those are our different types. Let's see what else do we have here. Keep going to that one for some reason. Oh, this is the type. This has the big recess. This is actually a very common light combing piston right here. So this one's got the flat head, although it says a slipper. Um, recessed, which they're trying to show right here. The um, concave and the dome head. So have those, those three types are the more common type. Again, rings, we have compression, compression, and oil control. What if it's down here? What is it called? Oil scraper. All right. Oops, that one. Okay, types of pistons. We had the flat. We had the recessed. We had the cup. We had the dome. Cup, cup dome, and truncated. All right, other points, other points. In other words, things I thought of to tell you that you really should know. One, newer pistons, whoa, N-E-W-E, -E, newer pistons, newer pistons have, have a couple of things. One, a black, Molly, which Molly is short for M O L Y B D E N U M disulfide. Disulfide, I got to roll up disulfide coating on 
the skirt. Which part is the skirt? There we go. Let's see. Uh, okay. Is this part the skirt? This is the knot skirt. Really, the skirt is over here. I, what I would call the skirt. So it's kind of this way up to and around to here. So it's that part that's not really showing. So this is the skirt. So it has this black coating on it. And I'm even seeing the black coating starting to show up in this areas. So you can see this black coating. I don't think I have a picture of the black coating. Let me see. Black coating. No, don't have the black coating. Yes? Back in the day when I used to race motocross, I had a KX85, and the piston skirt disintegrated. What would have caused that? My Honda did the same thing. Yeah, it, I was riding and it sounded like my chain got really loose. Yep. And then it, it ran fine. Oh, mine didn't. It just blah, it was done. Yeah, no, I stopped and I was like, Dad, I think my chain's falling off. And he was like, no, it's fine. Rode the whole day. Yeah, I um, afterwards on mine, I actually read the manual. It said you're supposed to change out pistons every 25 hours. <laughs> like, oh. But I never changed it out again. That's what the manual said. Um, okay, so you lost a bunch of your skirt. Remember, there's a big side load on it. Like all of it. Yeah, there's a, there's a tremendous side load on there. And those are uh, severely cut out and everything. So I would guess I would call that one the slipper type. I don't know. And uh, so it just developed a crack and then propagated and then broke off. Yeah. All right, so they have a black molly coating. So you can see that black molly coating now. Don't try and scrape it off. Molly, molybdenum is a lubrication, so it's, it's already pre-lubricated. Um, two, and this is a big change, um, have, newer pistons have, I don't have to put have twice, have steel belts. Steel belts in the piston grooves. So they are known as steel belted pistons. I'm like, what? You can't really see it on this at all. But there is a steel belt that runs right about in here. But uh, when the piston is made, you can absolutely see it. And so these grooves are protected by rings of steel. And the reason why is because the rings, especially up here, uh, the rings go in there and they're fluttering back and forth. So every time the piston comes up and changes direction, it's going to slam the ring down. So there it right, goes. It's up, slam the ring up that way. Slam it this way, that way. So it's constantly making the, the, the piston ring move back and forth. And I've seen some of these pistons get huge gaps. It's like, whoa! And you know that there was aluminum in that, that oil. It was getting crazy. And so they started making them um, with steel belts in there to stop that from happening. So that became a very, very common thing. I wish I had a picture of that more pronounced. So they did that. And this, this, this caused another problem. So, which had to be good. This caused, this caused cylinder manufacturers manufacturers to reduce the choke. Choke uh, from about point zero one two to about point zero zero four. So what I'm talking about is cylinders can either be when they're made, they're either made straight bore or they're made made choked. That's just the only two ways to make them: straight bore or choke. And what that means is if we're looking at, let's go back to a picture of a cylinder. I got a picture of a cylinder here. Keep going to the rings. I don't want the rings. Need to give me a whole cylinder. There we go, cylinder, so I can do it this way. All right, so when this one's made, and I guarantee this one's choked. Um, when this one's made, the barrel is in, inside here, right? So, oops. That. So inside here, we've got the barrel running this way. And if I was going to draw it very nice, I would draw it very parallel. And so, very parallel. The choke happens up here. So up here, we're either going to have choke or straight bore. Straight bore. Um, why did I spell it that way? I do not know. Oops. 
Let's spell it right. How do we spell straight? S T. Uh, with the G or without the S T R? Now you got me screwed up. You say G. You say without the G? without the G. That's George Strait right there. Yeah. A I G H T, right? Yeah. Matters. Spelling matters. Okay, straight. Straight. Oh, now I really screwed it up, huh? How do you spell straight? S T R. A I G H T. I did that. Okay. Straight board. Apparently, someone's having some internal struggles. Yeah. Okay. So. Or should have put not not choke. Okay. So choke board. Um, but then you get taper. So they're made this way. So they're made this way. Made, and this is where. All right. So, all right. So cylinders come in either straight bore or choke bore. Almost all cylinders now come as some sort of choke bore. Uh, the only ones that come straight are some very low horsepower ones. So what choke means is at the top, it gets narrower. And it doesn't start way down here and slowly get narrower. It goes to about this point up here and then suddenly starts coming in. Is that both leads? Um, mm, not quite that. Yeah, I'm just not quite that, but about there. So it suddenly starts coming in. And the reason why it does that is because the cylinder has more mass. And then as it warms up, it straightens out and expands. All right, so during its operation, then it becomes a straight bore while it's running. But we don't call them that. It's just it's, it's a choke bore because we talk about it at room temperature. It's got just like a, a cam ground piston. Talk about it at room temperature. So all these cylinders come as a choke bore. Uh, for a time there, um, actually all nitrided cylinders were choke bored. Plain steel were not choke bored. They were straight bored. Um, but anyway, so you get... Uh, they come as a choke bore, some of them come as a straight, but if you have taper, taper means it's going the other way. Taper means for some reason it kind of starts going out that way. That is just wear. That means the cylinder is worn. Now you have to think it through. If it was a straight bore, it wore from the straight to the out here to the taper. And I don't know, uh, common tapers maybe a couple thousandths, so we can say zero, zero, four. So if it went from a straight bore to a 4,000 taper, it wore 4,000 of an inch. If it went from a choke bore to a taper, it wore about, about 8 thousandths of an inch. So, no, oh, but it's always up here at the very uh, top. All right, so that's choke bore. So with the steel belted pistons, they actually had to go to um, change the choke. The choke was way too much. It was a lot of choke back in the day, way back when. So Kevin, you still belted, is that the same as inserted? Yes, Okay. steel inserts. Uh, let's see, removal. I don't know why this is here, we're gonna throw it here. Other, other points, that's right, other points, removal. Removal. Um, always remove the cylinder. When the piston is where? At T, D, C. Why? To prevent breaking the rings. Because sometimes you pull cylinders and you aren't going to change out the rings and unless you break them. And if you break them, then you are going to remove them. All right, piston rings. Piston rings, what is the purpose? Primary purpose of the piston ring. Provide a seal. Gotta seal those expanded gases, right? If you don't provide a seal for the gases, number one, you're going to have a power loss, arguably. Um, and I say that because I, don't know, I was talking to somebody. They were talking about 
somewhat destructive testing of engines. And I think it was at Lycoming School they were talking about that, where they actually started taking out pieces to see what would happen. So they took out all the rings just to see what kind of, you know, uh, the compression, of course, was horrible. And they tested it, and they still got the same horsepower out of the thing, which is crazy. Um, but you do have that hot gases then goes past the piston, and it starts to erode the piston from the hot gases. You don't have the transfer, and so the piston's going to melt pretty quickly. Um, what else? Well, this is kind of like providing a seal, but also prevent um, excessive oil from getting from getting into the combustion chamber. And three, the point I already made, conduct heat. From piston to cylinder. <coughs> so a little bit about rings. While well, you write, you know, kind of. So you're out in the field and you're working on these piston aircraft, and sometimes you have to remove a cylinder. So let's just say, and uh, if somebody reminds me tomorrow, bef well before dinner break, please. Let's do. Uh, we'll meet <coughs> for lecture. I want to show you guys a compression check. Well, let's do a compression check on one of the engines out there. And so everybody says, man, that is just really just. Whoa! I suddenly get it. So there's a lot of uh, test questions about you know, leakage here, leakage there. So let's do that. But anyway, um, all right, so you're doing a compression check, which is something you have to do every annual, every 100-hour inspection. On cars, you actually put a gauge on where the spark plug goes, and you rotate the engine, and you see how much pressure it'll press into an air line, which is on a gauge. So that's just a direct compression reading. It doesn't really tell you about where it could be leaking or low. It just tells you, well, it's low. It's not pumping up air. That's all you know. In aviation, we want to know how much air is going in and how much is staying and how much is leaving. And then we're going to diagnose it from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 80 pounds of air inside of an engine. And we're going to read a gauge that says I'm putting in 80 pounds. Then we've got an orifice, calibrated leak, and another gauge. So we want to measure how much stays in across this orifice. And then we want to listen to where it might be leaking. So there's only a couple places that air can leak out of a cylinder. right? So one is past the rings. Two, intake valve. Three, exhaust valve. And four, uh, okay, I'll take spark plugs. I was going to say or other spark plugs, cracking the engine, something like that. All right, but really we're looking for uh, valves in valves and ring is what we're trying to figure out. So, um, into the spark plug. Yeah. Don't know where I was going with this. Let's keep going. Let's keep talking. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, I know. So, that eh, sucks to get old. So, so you do a compression test and you're like, well, shoot, you know, I've got an exhaust valve leak. And that's usually what's going to happen. Or you don't have an exhaust valve leak and you do a bore scope check. You go in there with the camera, you look, and you, um, valve turn green. Green means stop in aviation valves. So green means stop. So you say, whoa, I got a green valve. It's got to come out. It's overheated. That's what overheat looks like. So you pull off the cylinder. Well, you did a compression check. Well, maybe the rings are fine. So you don't want to mess with the rings. If you mess with rings, then you got to rehome the cylinder, right? So you just start opening up all these problems. Think, well, if the rings are fine, let's leave the rings alone. So you got to be really careful with the rings, and you don't want to get them mixed up with something else. You don't even want to take them off the piston. Uh, on a lot of prop strikes, uh, we used to not even do the pistons because there was such a problem with um, the rings, having to hone it, then you got to you know, with the oil and stuff. So you'll, you'll start to see some of the problems when you get with that. Although I disagreed with that and said, no, let's think this through. If you have a sudden stoppage, the piston moves. Don't you think that that could get cracked or damaged? So I, in my shop, we had to do the pistons. So, but, um, but anyway, so when you start, when you start dealing with, with these rings, they have seated in the cylinder that, that they're in, and they want to be in that spot. And if you disturb them and if you mess with them, 
then you're going to have to replace them. And if you replace them, then you have to hone the cylinder. And you got to get new rings, and you got to fit them to the cylinder. So it just creates this whole thing. So you got to be really careful with these rings. They do not like to be bumped or, or spread. So I'm letting you guys take the top ring off. Uh, and the top, actually, the top two compression rings, if you're very careful, you can get them off. It's that oil control ring that almost always breaks. And it's going to break if you spread it too far. And it's going to break if you bump it. So what happens is you're going to, to put the engine back together, you're going to put a, a um, ring, compressors. ring compressors. And, thank you. And you're going to compress the rings. Um, but you're, this ring compressor has to be tight enough to compress the rings, but loose enough to still slide on the piston. So you put that on, and you're going to get the, pist the, the cylinder on there. And you're going to try and put it on and move the whole thing. Well, inevitably, if you're not fast enough, bink, you knock off the ring uh, compressor and the cylinder whacks into that last ring and you go, oh, it's all right, just back up a little bit. No, you pretty much just cracked it. You'll, you'll find out when the next person takes it apart that it's in a whole bunch of pieces. So you have to be super careful with them. Um, all right, so material, what are they made out of? It's, you guys are already asking me some of these, these questions and then they're really good questions like, how do I know this? How do I know that? It's kind of hard. Um, they're, they're made by with a uh, high grade, high grade cast iron, cast iron. The compression rings, which ones are the compression rings? Mm -hmm. Typically the top two. If you're talking about old school radial engines, then you could be talking about the top three. Old radial engines, they, they would go one, two, three, compression, then, then an oil control, and then an oil scraper. So they had all the rings on them. Uh, compression rings, maybe, maybe chrome plated. Chrome plated. And that requires me to say this never, I'll put it in all caps, any, never, never. Uh, use chrome plated chrome plated rings in a chrome plated cylinder. The chrome from the two of them will eat each other up and rip the chrome off and make a big mess. So if the cylinder Cylinder and then ring. So if the cylinder is plain steel, not a lot of them are plain steel anymore. Um, the ring was usually plain or chrome. If it was nitrided, then you almost always had chrome. If it was chrome, then you absolutely had plain, plain rings. And, well, now they have some really exotic stuff. Uh, Sermonil, ceramic nickel, and you need special rings with those. So every time you get into chrome or plating, you have special rings. All right. No, I'm down here already. You got to catch up. Man. All right. I'm running out of paper. All right. Types of rings. Types of rings. I'm not going to test you on this one. You can just relax. All right, inlaid molly. So this is inside. Oops, you can't see that. My laser pointer. All right, so this is inside the the piston uh, inside the piston. So we have uh, this is the part that's going to scrape against the cylinder wall. So we've got inlaid molly. What does molly do? Lubricates. Lubricates. We got chrome faced. Where does a chrome faced ring go? Not in chrome, chrome cylinders, but in nitrided. All right. Um, I don't know, that's just a flat ring if you ask me, a plain, although it's got the little chamfer in the back, plain, um, chrome. I don't see many of these beveled steps or scraper out here. 
um, tapered face, not so common. Keystone is keystone and half keystone. You see a lot of these. So keystone is just both ends are triangular and a half keystone is eh, not quite as much. It's really hard to tell the difference when you're looking at them. So mostly it's kind of squarish or keystone is what you see more of. I don't know where they get this torsional twist stuff from. I really don't. All right. I got to move. Types of rings. All right. So those are the types right there I just showed you. Um, we have the cross section. Cross section. We had the square. We had the, oops. Keystone, we got the half keystone. When you are, and it says in your instructions, when you get to the point where you're trying to measure the side clearance, how these fit in your piston, <coughs> you got to see me because there's an easy way to do it. Who have I shown already? Was it much easier? Okay, I did the other, what the book says barely even makes, it makes sense, but it's like, you need three hands to do it at a minimum. All right, um, so rings are obviously split. Rings are split. Why are they split? To allow installation. To allow, to get it on, to allow installation. To allow installation. Uh, it's usually just a butt joint. I said butt. <laughs> I'm just doing my duty. Uh, <laughs> usually just a butt joint, which means it's just two parts coming together. There's no fancy, uh, well, some of them aren't, so they're cut down like that, and another one would come over this way. So that is not a butt joint. So that's quite quite the little fancy joint there. Uh, but most of them just come up and just like that. In fact, what sucks is often you have to fit rings to, to the cylinder. And so there's nothing you can do about the side clearance, about how the ring fits into the, uh, the piston gap. It's either works or it doesn't work. And if it doesn't, you got a problem. Uh, the pistons either wore out or if it's too tight, then you just gotta change out the ring. Uh, but when you put them in the cylinder and you have to measure the end gap, so they come around, you have to measure the end gap. It's really common to have to actually file that because the gap is too too tight. If the gap is too big, then you, just, you got to do a different ring. So, so that is a critical measurement. And if you're wrong, so the book is going to tell you, okay, you're going to put it down X number of inches, like four inches. You're going to measure this gap in there where the rings come together inside the cylinder. And then what happens is if uh, you, you're looking at it and go, well, you know, it says I should have eight thousandths. Eh, I've got four. I mean, you know, what's the big deal? What is the big deal? Actually, it's worse. When the engine's cold, you have the choke, right? The choke is there. And so when it comes up to the choke, it's going to smash in. So when it gets to operating temperature, then it'll work. But by then, it's already smashed itself in there. So you got to make sure you do that. Um, so it is a critical thing. And I hate it, but you're constantly adjusting those. Uh, compressions. So first we have the compression ring. So that is the top, top one or two, one, top one or two mostly. It could be more or more or more. Uh, so I said maybe chrome plated, maybe chrome plated. And I already said not to use chrome. Chrome on chrome is bad. Then we have, what's the next one? Oil control. And what do you suppose that does? <laughs> Use to control oil, control oil into the cylinder. And then it drains drains um, oil 
through holes in the piston, in the piston groove, in the ring groove, that's what I say, in the ring groove. So inside that little groove where the oil control rings go, you can actually look in there and there's a whole bunch of holes drilled through. So it, that the purpose of that ring, if it wasn't for that one, you can just kind of imagine that the compression rings are going to grab a bunch of oil and it's going to pull it up in there and it's going to get a lot of, you're going to burn a lot of oil. So this oil control ring actually is just designed to sort of scrape away a certain amount of oil, kind of keep some on there, but more or less scrape it away. And then the extra goes in between and then down into those little holes. Also, um, well, I guess I did write this, good for me. So three, usually a two piece, usually a two piece ring. So there's an inner part and an outer part, an inner spring, if you will. Let's see if we got something. Piston pins, I want to talk about piston pins. There we go. I don't know, you might be able to see this. So you can see that there's this spring down inside of there. And so that it, it's just, it's really, it looks like a spring. It's a piece of coil uh, wire that's coiled. And inside of it, there's like a piece of safety wire about yay big. And that goes inside the spring here and inside the spring here, you just put them together and that's how it stays together. So you put that split opposite of the split on the ring. So you put the spring in first, then you put the oil control ring on around it. It just fits up inside of it. It's kind of easy. It's not a big deal. So usually two piece ring. All right, then, so you're always gonna see three rings. A minimum, always three rings. Compression, compression, oil control. Always gonna see that. You may see three compression and an oil control. Or you may see a fourth ring. If you see the fourth ring way down at the bottom, we'll put that one. What's that one called? Oil scraper. Oil scraper. <clears throat> this one is really an optional. And the easiest way to, to describe this one, and this is probably isn't very accurate or very nice, but it's kind of like a, it's like an hot crap. We done screwed up somewhere when we engineered this engine and it's not working well. And the problem is it's either burning too much oil or it's burning up the, pist the, the cylinder wall. So imagine if you will, you, you, you take and you, you design an engine and you build the prototype and you go out and you run it and you run it for 100 hours, you take it apart and you have that nice choke cylinder and now you have massive taper mm -hmm. and a huge wear step where the piston is coming up and turning around where that last ring is right there. So literally it looks like, you know, the cylinder bore comes up, um, starts to taper out and then you have that. Mm -hmm. That's really what it looks like in there. Um, and so what's happening is you, you start, well, that's not quite to scale, but this is where that last ring is hitting. So the last ring is coming up to right here, and then the piston is, piston is here. So the ring groove is right there. And so that's what it's, it's hitting right there. So what's causing this problem to happen here? And by the way, you're usually gonna say something like, this is going well, it's not burning any oil. Lack of lubrication. Lack of lubrication, so you don't have any lubrication in there. So we got one of two problems, either you ran the engine and it burned so much oil that it was unacceptable and like, wow, we're going to have to get a bigger oil tank or something because this thing isn't. And by the way, they pull it apart like, hey, well, at least the cylinder wall didn't, you know, it's not damaged because it was really well lubricated and that's burning a bunch of oil. Or it's like, hey, this is great. It's not burning any oil, but oh, crap, man. You know, we've just wore out the top of the cylinder in a couple hundred hours. So what they do is you add an oil scraper ring. And depending upon which way you put it is what problem you're trying to solve. So even though oil rings come with, all rings come with the word top on it. It has the part number and the word top. And that means that that is the top when the piston is facing that way. Uh, th this way right here. So we would see the word, and we'd see the word top, top written right there. Or sometimes a dot and usually the part number on it too. So we can identify them as you're putting them on. Uh, but the scraper ring, it's going to say the same thing. You're going to get a scraper ring and a green, and you'll see top. 
But top does not mean top. That just is the word top. And so you have to read the book. And the book will say, and install the, the oil scraper ring with the word top towards the bottom, upside down. So in one case, the oil ring is used to grab oil and scrape it up onto the cylinder. And what problem do you think they're trying to solve? Lack of lubrication. In the other instance, the oil scraper ring is trying to take oil that is up there and scrape it the heck out of the way. And that is because too much oil burn. So that's why you never just assume that the oil scraper goes top up. You have to read the book. Depends on what they were trying to do. And they might have used that ring on some engines to go scrape in and other ones to scrape out. So, And then you get into radials, which you have to think about. One cylinder is sitting this way and one is upside down completely. So it could be possible that the one up here is used to scrape oil into and the one down here is used to scrape it out of. And then you think, well, what about these? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, it's so an oil scraper. That's why it's optional. All right. Uh, located on skirt. So, located, located on the skirt. Way down below. <coughs> May be used to scrape oil in or out of the cylinder. So always install per manufacturer. I'm going to abbreviate that MFR so we can save time and see world instructions. <laughs> instructions. And I'll put some engines top goes up and some top goes down. <laughs>